All right, welcome everyone to day two here at NAB 2022. We're at the Maxon booth showcasing how our amazing artists use Maxon One products in their workflow. And I have to say, to my left is one of the most talented educators, editors, and just all around amazing people in our industry, the one, the only, Jeff Goldberg. Take it out here, Jeff. Take it, Green Jeff Greenberg, folks. Take it Thank from you here. so much. Uh, my name's Jeff Greenberg, and I actually don't like to tell you who I am. I like to sit back and prove to you that I have information that's worth seeing, worth learning about. Uh, I'm an editor. I do other things. I'll put that QR code up later. Uh, that gets you to my email. That gets you to my notes of the stuff, the stuff I give away for free. I'm even happy to talk to any human being on this planet for 20 minutes for free. Meanwhile, today, we're going to do something a little dangerous, and I'm doing it from the editor's chair. Not, i got to tell you, I'm totally intimidated by the Cinema 4D, the ZBrush, all the After Effects people. I've been using After Effects for years, but I can't call myself an artist the way these people call themselves an artist. I'm a colorist. I'm an editor. And what I deal with a lot is the need to go fast. So here's the danger. I launched Media Composer, I launched Resolve, I launched Premiere, and we're going to take a look at some of the ways that when I work with people, we use the Maxon tools to just do some amazing things quickly. It's not about necessarily getting art, it's about making deliveries. Because if you don't meet the deadline, those pretty pictures don't matter anyway. So let's see. Each tool is great and have their plain pain points. And I'm going to be swapping back and forth as we go. We're going to be focusing on edit. I'm looking at the particular set of tools here. Uh, one item out of the VFX suite. I'm going to look at some magic bullet items. And I'm going to look at universe. And uh, I want to do a couple items here out of the gate. I'm not just going to do max on items, I want to sit back and show you some other tips while I'm in these tools that help make me fast. And the first one I want to do, how many of you, by the way, up front or out there have sat back and you've got the new Adobe Premiere installed? Yeah. And you go, where are my workspaces? John right here, I went and showed him this about two minutes ago. You can go up here at the top under workspaces and look at that right there. It says, show workspace tabs. And now suddenly, you have all your workspaces back. It's like you've got that nice click functionality back on the system. And I really love that. I want to do one more that, again, is hidden. And John and a couple of you, if this helps, if what I'm about to do changes the way you use Premiere, give me just a little applause to let me know I showed you something cool. I'd like you to see there happens to be right here a history palette. Now, I typically will take the history palette and dock it in here because as I work, I want to know what I undid or did as I work. Under the little flyout, and this is a premiere thing, this isn't a Maxon thing, under settings, I'd like to go from 32 undos to 99 undos and say OK. And it's just that extra little forgiveness that makes it easier to work. So those are two little tips. We'll do other tips as we get to other pieces of these tools. I want to go ahead here, though, and grab a particular timeline. I'm going to look at the front here. There we go. I have this really nice green screenshot. I have a background. And you're just going to have to take my word for it at the moment. This won't key well with, with Ultra, the built-in keyer of Premiere. And if you're like me, your tendency is when you have a key that fails, you're going to go to After Effects and use Keylight. I'd rather do it in the editorial tool because they may change the background. They may want to do story changes, and it's better for me to work here. So we're going to talk a little bit about keying. And before you key, I'm going to go ahead here and bring up my effect controls. I'm going to teach you just again. My pedagogy about teaching is natural language models. I'd like you to know that Shift 1 takes you to the project window. Shift 2 takes you to the source window. 
Shift three, timeline, shift four. What comes after four? Shift five, right there, brings up my effect controls. It's just a little bit faster when I work like this. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to delete the keyer I have on here. We'll build it from scratch. I am going to take the opacity here, and I'm going to build a mask because when you key, what's out here on the edges doesn't count. What counts is that I don't want to have to roto, and I certainly don't want to have to roto hair like this. And I'm going to end up using Primat in a moment. Let's go ahead here, though. I'm just going to zoom out. Let's uh, take this down to about 50%. Ooh, 25. There we go. And I'm going to just quickly draw a quick garbage mat. You just need to make sure she doesn't put her arms or anything through it. I don't want my keyer to have to worry about these pieces. All right, so we've matted her out. I now need prime mat. Wait, wait, I did shift one, shift two, shift three, shift four, shift five, skip six, shift six. Go right to shift seven. Go right to shift seven. Ooh, why? Ooh, ooh, I'm dead in the water. Something's not right. Uh, Matthias, Matthias, my friend. Oh, it's working, sorry. It just needed your smile. Shift seven brings up my effects. I'll go ahead to my video effects. I'm gonna just come down here a little bit and I'm going to go to Red Giant VFX and grab my Primat keyer and throw it on the shot. So this is a tough shot to key. I'll go ahead and try and auto-define because I'd like it to just do the work and in a lot of cases this does work. It's done an okay job, not a perfect job, an okay job. Uh, I'm gonna wanna use and sample the background and the foreground. I want you to know that the next time you try something like Primat in Premiere, you have to click the name of it for these tools to actually work on the overlay directly. So this is part of the background here and I'm just gonna say right there's the background. I'll undo those last two. Let's try that with this. I'd like you to add this to the background. There we go, there we go. It'd be even better for me to see the mat. So let's look at the mat of this. When you do keying work, you wanna see that mat to see what it's keying and what it's not keying. It's wow, it's, it's pretty good. I would like to make sure the black is totally black at the top. Matte black point. I'm just gonna click and slide a little bit. That's even better. Do you see her eyes are being in the key? I had no idea this existed about a year ago, and I found out this little button. Core mat says everything on the inside should just key out. There you go, done. No, no uh, holdout mats, a single click. I'm still like a little bit in awe of that. And this looks good when I'm done. It's not gonna be perfect. We're going to make it look better. So it looks pretty good. How do you feel about her, the brightness of her shot, her gamma? It's way off, right? So really good keys aren't about keying. Really good keys are everything after you key. That's what sells the key. So for this, I'm gonna to wanna to use, I could use Magic Bullet, but I'm gonna use an Adobe tool. I'm gonna to go ahead here, because I love Adobe. I'm gonna to go to color. I'm going to use uh, my Lumetri scopes. Now, if you read scopes, great. If you don't, she's in the center. Does everybody see she's darker than the background? She's brighter than the background? I can fix this any way you want. I'm just gonna use the curves. I'm just gonna pull down the top of this. I'll put the brightest moment right about there. I'm gonna pick up the shadows. I'm gonna make the shadows just as muddy. It's beginning to look really good. The color temperature's a little off. I'm just gonna go to basic correction, play with the temperature, move the temperature a little bit left and right until she begins to seem, I think she's still a little mid-tone bright. Let's go to curves and take the mid-tone down a little bit. And she's beginning to look like she belongs in that scene. And that, at the end of the day, is something I'm trying to do quickly. If my producer, if my, my storytelling self says, I need to extend this shot because it's an interview, I need to do something different, I don't have to kick it back over to After Effects, make more adjustments. I'm doing it here in the bottom of the foundation, my editorial tool, and I'm able to be a better storyteller with tools like Primat. 
So I'm pretty happy with that. Time for us to do uh, a little bit of mojo. So I'm going to switch to a different timeline. Or actually, this timeline. Let's, uh, I have an adjustment layer over the top. I just want to talk, I'm going to delete the adjustment layer. I'd like to show you something a little bit about building adjustment layers in Premiere. I'm going to go ahead and build an adjustment layer from scratch. So uh, with a little bit more space here, let's go back to editing. There we go. Shift one, bring me back to the project. There we go. I'm just going to right-click and say New Item, Adjustment Layer. Whatever it does is fine. Adjustment Layer, I'm going to double-click. It's going to load it up here. It's five seconds of an adjustment layer, and I need more than five seconds. So what I'm going to do is just pull that out, pull this over a little bit, and I'll pull this out to about 30 seconds. I like a 30-second or so adjustment layer sitting in my projects. And because I double-click this, because this is in the actual bin, this is an adjustment layer I can use for the rest of time. And that means practically for me, this will become part of my project templates. I'm going to call this a 30-second adjustment. Now, instead of me ever building an adjustment layer again, I've got a nice 30-second piece that I can slap across the top and drag out to whatever distance I want. Now, I teach color correction. I teach a bunch of tools. But all I want to do is use a quick tool, because we don't have the time. This is fairly well shot, this material. But what we need to do is we need to get it out with just a little bit of punch, a little bit of mojo, if you will. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit a Shift-7 to bring up uh, all of my effects. I'll just type in mojo. And I'm just going to drag mojo on top. We're going to watch the image, one, two, three. It got just a little moodier, a little bit nicer. I'm going to go ahead and hit a Shift-5 so you can see what this footage looks like. I like the idea of punching it a little bit. Let's give it a little bit of extra punch. It's got a built-in vignette. It's got a couple nice built-in items. And it's one click touching that I'm going for here, because I'm an editor and I, gotta, I don't get to go home. I don't get to go home till this is output. And because I've just got it punchy enough, the client's happy. So there's a little bit of mojo for you. It's a great little piece of the Magic Bullet suite. And I'm always stunned when I see these in suites and people aren't using them for this quick sort of work. I'm going to be doing deeper work as we go. Don't worry. So here we go. Let's have some danger. I'm over here in Media Composer. I've got a client, a guy here, he's too bright. Uh, this is where I'm going to end up heading. I'm going to remove this effect and this effect. I'm going to remove this effect and this effect. These are just overly bright. They were exposed a little bit too high. I'm going to use that same effect mojo here for my effect palette. palette. But before I do, I want to show you a hidden media comp How many Media Composer editors are there? Is there anybody here using Media Composer? None of you here. That's OK. This is what they cut all the feature films with, guys. You know, it's a great tool. It's a great tool. One of the things, though, that I get frustrated by is that when I go ahead and I put an effect, in this case, I want a magic bullet mojo on this shot in a moment, I have to go into effect mode, kind of like when you go into Premiere and you say, go to the effect controls. You know what would be really nice? I can go ahead here and show the timeline settings of Avid under Edit. I don't know if you can see what that says right there. Applying effects opens the effect editor. If any of you use Avid, what I do, look, it's just for you. What this, w then I'm going to throw the effect, and I'm instantly in effect mode. And you go, why didn't I know about it? It's been in there for about four years, four years or so. Applying effects opens effect editor. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to grab Mojo. I'm going to put some Mojo on that shot. We're looking over here. This is where I like to point out to people, Avid has this really nice workspace called Effects. I'm going to get into effect mode. And here in effect mode, here's my effect. It's well overexposed. Uh, notice it says corrections. This works like stops. I'm just going to start pulling this back until I feel it's not overexposed. Now, 
I'm a symphony instructor. If you're not aware, Avid's color correction suite is called Symphony. I actually teach the trainer trainer classes. I do it out of Burbank. What I'd like you to know is that a lot of people may just use Avid for a rough color correction or they don't know how to color correct. And, all, and Symphony often gets you deep into switches. I've just pulled back the exposure just enough that he's looking pretty decent here. The only thing is, uh, I'd like to give it a little bit of extra color. One of the things that I love as a filmic look is a bleach bypass. Bleach bypass blurt pulls, gives it some extra blues, pulls out some of the, the chrominance. You'll notice the bleach it zeroes in the middle. I can reverse the bleach bypass to actually add a little warmth to the shot and add a little nice uh, saturation with a single slider making me faster. Faster than if I was using a whole bunch of other tools and had to drill down. Now the only problem is, and we get this with every human being on this planet, nobody's face, nobody is perfect. And in this case, my client might go, hey, can you do something? He's a little ruddy, he's a little red. They didn't notice it because he was overexposed. So I'm going to use a little bit of cosmetic what they call Cosmo. And for those of you who have never seen Avid Effects, you have to hold down the Alt key to put one effect on top of another. So I'm going to take Cosmo here. I'm going to hold down the Alt key. I'm going to drag it on top. One, two, three, I'm done. And what I need to do is say, all right, I'd like to sample some of his skin, and particularly that red selection. So I'm going to say skin sample. I'm going to come over here and take that red. And instantly, it's a little bit better. I can say, show me that selection. That's actually pretty good. I was going to make a change, but I don't need to. I'm going to come down here, and I'm just going to play with the automatic color correct. I'm going to take it off, take it up. I'm going to say, eh, I'm going to play a little bit with the yellow and pink. Use a little bit more of unification of his skin. Now, I just want you to see here, he looked once upon a time like this. And I now have him looking, ooh, where did it go? I, oh, I know what I did. There you go. And now I have him looking like this. And I realize this shot is overexposed the same way. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to run into this as a problem on a show like this. I'm going to go to my bins. I happen to have a effects bin here. I'm going to go ahead in effect mode. Not remove effect, effect mode. There we go. I'm going to close up Cosmo. It's still there. I'm going to take Mojo, put it in a bin. <laughs> and now I come to this shot, and I can take this Mojo. Not Mojo, Jeff, Cosmo. You wanted the original effect. Effect mode. I want the mo I want. Mo I did want Mojo. That is what I wanted. I'm going to take Mojo, throw it on this clip, and it's corrected the same way because it was shot under the same circumstances. This is a very quick and fast way to work. This is media composer working fast is the key here. All right. Let's jump back to Premiere for a second. By the way, have you ever seen somebody bang between two editors like this? No, it's crazy, right? The key here is speed. I, uh, in any one given week, I was just telling this to somebody earlier today. I, in the last seven days, not even for this, I was using three different editorial tools for three different clients based on what their host platform is. I don't want them to not hire me because I'm not fast or I'm not capable of their weapon of choice. And the whole beauty of these tools for me is that it allows me to keep being fast at what I do. So I'm back in Premiere, and I've got the Magic Bullet Suite, Shift-1, I want to get back to my project. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead here and open up this different piece here called Paris. Uh, I've got something finished here, so I'm going to go ahead with it selected and delete the coloristas that are on here. So, let's see if I put the slide in, if I was smart enough to put the slide in. I did not put the slide in. I was an idiot. Mr. Simon Walker, I forgot my favorite slide. My favorite slide is about teaching color correction in an intuitive way. And basically speaking, we, as a 
career struggle a little bit around color without good instruction. And generally, whether it's symphony, whether it's resolve, I teach color for a group called the ICA, the International Colorist Academy, iColorist.com. What I'd like you to hear is everything, every, this is an eight year sentence. This sentence took me eight years to get. Everything is a luma issue or a chroma issue. If you can figure out which, you got a shot at working the controls. And in fact, to go a step further, I want to sit back and desaturate a shot to see the luminance issues, and then supersaturate a shot to see the chrominance issues. You with me conceptually? What if somebody could walk me through that process? Uh, it's funny you say that. Uh, what I'm going to do here is use Magic Bullet to do exactly, I'm sorry, Colorease to do exactly that. So a Shift 7, let's uh, drill these open all the way, video effects. I'm going to go to Magic Bullet. I'm going to take Colorista. I'm going to drag it on the shot. Now, down here, it's got, this, it's got all these controls. Look at that control. Everything's a Luma issue or a Chroma issue. If you can figure out which, you got a shot at the controls. And I'm just going to click for the guided color correction. You don't have to use this, but it's neat. This happens to be standard video. And first, let's set the black point. I hate to tell you, they built in a wizard to do a rough, decent color correction. And I think it's pretty good. It's pretty much the way I teach intuitive color. I taught an Adobe Max Lab uh, for Premiere that has footage that really walks you through a Lumetri-based one, but it's really similar conceptually. I'm going to pull my black levels down until I get a little bit of tickling of blue right here. I'm going to go ahead. The white levels are good right where they are. And then it goes, hey, how does this look midtone-wise? And I'm just going to rock it back and forth. Oh, I like that a little bit better. This is its guess. I'm going to say contrast. Mm, I'm playing with the contrast. I'm just looking for an appealing picture. If the black and white doesn't look good, the color's not going to look good. And now I'm going to come back here and start saturating it. Now, as I saturate it, there are going to be some cool... Oh, it's not showing me the cool... Oh, cool overlays are next. So I'll take it past where I like to go and then back it off. Now, I work in color-calibrated environments. But if you know nothing about color correction and you have a shot that's problematic, suddenly here this guided color correction can make a shot bearable or decent. Notice in here these colors, it knows that a memory color like sky or grass is supposed to be, or flesh tones, as I move this around, it's going, oh, you know, this is what the sky is supposed to look like. Now this happens to be a very overcast day. I'm fairly happy with that. I'll let that go. I'm going to be done. I'm going to say finished before, after. I went from this, scrolling up, scrolling up, to this. It's good, but that sky's a little much for me still. I want to come back and handle just that sky. And to do this, I'm really a huge fan of this idea that when I work with color, I've got this panel over to the right. What if, what if, Shift 5, bringing this back up. What's that say right there? Open as a what? Panel. And as I open this as a panel, Colorista shows up here. I've got one Colorista on it. I'd like you to know that I could add a second. Let's, uh, by the way, let's take this first one. Let's right click on it. And let's name it primary. Let's add a second one. And now you'll see up here, I can get to both of those coloristas because the second one, all I wanted to do is play in the highlights. Uh, we'll use the keyer. The keyer is really nice here. Structure and lighting, hue and sat. Come on, I can find it. Keyer, there it is. Keyer, I'd like to get that sky. Give me a little bit more. Do a little additive here. This is a lot better than the HSL keyers on the market if I can select anything with my speaker blindness, I can just grab this and say, grab all the bright items. Look at it beginning to pink up that sky. Now it's getting me some of the other information. There we go, I did softness, come on. Add to it hue, saturation, lightness. Give me that whole sky. Ooh, greens, ooh, 
pull up, pull down. Am I getting it perfectly? I'm certainly not going fast. It's killing me as a, a color corrector. We'll leave that there for the time being. Anytime you have a mat, you always, always, always add a little bit of softness to the mat. And with it set there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to push a lot more blue into the image. But it's only going to be up there in this keyed area. Let's just push some blue into the highlights. There we go. And this now is a much more tolerable looking sky. I would probably do a little bit of masking, but I wanted to give you a feel with that. So uh, this is Magic Bullet Suite. This is Colorista. I so far have touched Premiere twice. I've touched Media Composer. You know what I'm not going to do personally? I'm probably not going to rely on color tools in Resolve because Resolve is a really amazing editor color corrector tool. But we can do some other stuff here with Resolve that's pretty powerful. So uh, I want to do the, I'm working on the edit page, and if you're not familiar with the color tools, being able to work on this page, even with the magic bullet looks, is really nice. Uh, I do want to show you one crazy thing in Resolve here. And by the way, uh, Fusion is a great compositor. I'm teaching a class on that tomorrow. I want to show you one cool Resolve item. If I'm trying to audition and say like how well this shot looks or something about it, I'm going to hit play. And then I may want to come back and make a change. You know what would be really nice? If my software knew when I said stop to go back where I started, it's something you can turn on and resolve under playback. It's called stop and go to last position. Now, for those of you who live as editors, constantly tweaking, constantly tweaking, I now go to do something, and I hit play. And when I hit stop, it puts me back where I started, which is great for me making adjustments as I work. So, all right. Where I really like Resolve as an editor, or where I like Resolve as a color tool, I'm not as always happy with its titles. So I'm going to go to Effects, and I just want you to see here, there are some really nice effects. I'm looking, oh, do you, do you see how my project is here? Let's just close up the project. We now just have all the effects sitting here in Resolve. And in fact, I'm not using the source monitor. It's wasted space. I can go up here and click this dot, and we're just looking almost kind of After Effects-ish. I'm able to sit back and get really isolated, direct work for what I want to do. I'm coming to this first shot. I want to put some, a title on it. I already have one on it. Let me bring up the inspector and remove that. Effects, delete, there we go. So this is the opening shot here. And what I've got, wow, are you guys really going to let me go the full length? I guess you will. I'll do two more things, because I'm going to run out of time. Uh, I'm going to go to my generators here. I'd like you to see, uh, actually, let's do it under filters. I'm going to scroll down to some of the uh, universe items. And I happen to have a universe item that I like a lot called, oh, I, oh it's not there. Why isn't it there? Ooh, it should be there. Uh, I would like, let's see what, uni typecast. Uni typecast. Hey, this is sort of like the old school live type. It's an animated text block that I can do anything I want with. Uh, I'm going to make the inspector a little bit larger so I have more control. And all I'm going to do just is a little bit of effect adjustment for its start and end. Let's edit that text. We'll go. I love great, fast tools. I'm going to select this. I'm going to make it a lot bigger. Let's uh, make it 48 point. Let's see what we get. Oh, yeah, got to select everything first. Yeah. Let's say OK. Better. I want it a little bit bigger. Let's make it a uh, 72 point. So right now, it's not animated. It's also not against the background. I'll change the blend mode to normal. It's now against the background. I've got an effect start here. It's doing it letter by letter. I've had to set essentially no keyframes so far for this animation. I'll put a keyframe right here as the effect start. I'll go a little bit into the shot. And all I'm going to do is scrub this until the entire item has come down. And I've set my second keyframe. If you're an editor, you want to work fast, this is really nice. I'm going to change it to going word by word. I'm going to hit play. It's going to play this back. And here I've got really attractive, quick text. 
easier than what's built into Resolve's text tools. It's not that it can't do it, it's just not doing it as fast as I'd like it to. So there's a little bit in Resolve. And while I'm here, just some other fun text items that exist. Uh, there is, aside from this type on, and this is your computer text, there is also screen text. And there's a whole bunch of presets for like coding work. If you've ever worked on a show where they're in news, where they're doing all the latest, uh, oh, you know, we did this AI stuff, instead of using some generic piece of stock art, you can go through and get some really nice animated computer looking text going on. All right. Oh, one more I got to show here because we get asked for it all the time is Progresso. I'm just going to throw Progresso on the shot for a moment to show you here a little bit about the presets. If you've, oh, I have the wrong one there. Let's uh, delete that. There we go. Presets. Choose a preset. If you've ever had a build or need as an editor a thermometer that's building and, and you'd go, oh, no, man, I got to go and talk to the graphic department, I'm able to do it here and go, you know, I'd like this to be, oh, power up. Apply it. And then I just need to keyframe this as far as where the progress is. Here I am, the editor who doesn't have great motion graphic skills or time, and I'm able to quickly do some wonderful animation to add to my work. Uh, there are some great fun transitions here. And one of the neat parts is Resolve when you go ahead and you look at a transition, let's come about down here. Resolve will scrub your transitions so you can see what they do without actually having to apply anything. This becomes a really, and you know, you, it's real easy to get cheesy transitions in general with the rule kind of like fonts. You're allowed to use one, two different types of transitions in a work. You're not allowed to use 10. But when you start adding it to text and the like, it's super crazy powerful. And on that super crazy powerful one, uh, I'll maybe switch here. Uh, sw oh, I'll do, uh, I love this. Color mosaic and color stripe. The idea that I would use, let's go ahead, let's drag and drop that on. Uh, this color stripe, let's see that. Let's try that one more time. Play, ooh. It's not playing that well. Let's undo that. Let's, put it, let's try it on one different one. Let's put it over here. There we go. Play that back. I have no idea why it's not playing correctly, but the big thing I'd like you to hear conceptually is I'll set this to client colors, product colors, because it becomes a really beautiful wipe that's really part of the project. All right. Let's go back to Avid. Avid, again, struggles a little bit in having really nice transitions, things that are a little bit different. And I'm going to go here to this transition play timeline. And I like these transitions that exist here. Uh, I find that the big thing that we look for right now, there are a couple looks we see, a grunge look and a VHS look. And one of the things that Universe is known for are these looks. So I'm going to show you a couple transitions here, like this light transition, like this film. I'll go to this. I'm a, I went to film school. I love this. I don't want it to be an 8 millimeter soundtrack. I'd like it to be 16 millimeter or maybe a projection frame. It just gives me a little bit more oomph when I'm trying to show something that has, let's say here in effects, a channel blur or a glitch transition. I'm just going to say, you know what, it's a little bit much. Let's try a little bit of color loss. Let's try a little bit of data strips just to give it a little distinctive look. You should know in Media Composer, my one guy who knows Media Composer left. That's all right. Uh, Media Composer, one of the neatest things that you can do is when you get something like this you love, you go ahead and you create a bin called Quick Effects. Oh, no, quick transitions. Almost blew it. And I can set the length of this. I can say, you know what? This should be a 15-frame transition. And I'm going to drag this into the bin. Now, as a longtime Avid editor, one of the nice things is Avid's got a key, a button, that lets you bring up quickly and set transitions on one clip or multiple clips. Did you see what I called that bin? Quick transitions? 
Because what you then can do is because it's in a bin called Quick Transitions, Media Composer now sees that glitch as one of the default transitions you can get to quickly. Uh, that's been a Media Composer for 20 years, and I've discovered Avid editors every day who don't know it for whatever reason. It's one of the things I love. I have a bin of Quick Transitions I bring with me all the time just to have that little bit extra bit of speed. So uh, along those lines of speed, Universe is a godsend for me. I'm going to go ahead here, switch over to Premiere, and just show a couple last-minute pieces. Uh, I'm going to leave this color layout that now has Colorista as well as Lumetri available to me. I'm going to go to Editing here. And uh, I've got my system set to automatically selection follows playhead, so it's automatically selecting the clips. And one of the items that I think that gets missed in our tool sets is that there is up here under the window extensions. You can see some of the extensions I've got, but one of the ones that's just magical is the fact that Red Giant Universe is an actual panel. So instead of me trying to go and just look at presets, I can bring this up, make it part of the interface if I want or not, and pick something I want and look through the dial what they are. And this right here, this line, is something I get asked all the time in product videos. Man, I do not, I love After Effects. I love After Effects. The problem is, I do not want to have to go over to After Effects to draw an animated line and then have to generate it and come back or even save and use Dynamic Link to come back to my editor. What I really want to be able to do is just apply the effect, come here to the line, select the line. Remember, you have to select the name for Premiere to light this stuff up because I want to go, hey, this right here is the important thing. And then all we're going to do here with Universe Line is we're going to animate, don't help me, the draw on percentage. So I can sit back and say, hey, I just wanted to go from here to here. This becomes a wonderful way professionally to do lines. What else is there? Um, there's lines, there's uh, transition swish pan. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to my favorite one at the moment, which is called Warp. I'd like a video transition called Uni Warp. This right now is my personal favorite social media transition. And what makes it my favorite is when I drag this onto a clip, let's uh, turn off Selection Follows Playhead. I'm going to drag Uni Warp right here. I'm going to zoom in. And as I zoom in, it's got this really cool sort the of. Birthplace. Ooh, ooh, I didn't expect the audio to be there. Let's lose that audio. And let's tell my kid not, can't talk to her right now. All right. I'm going to go ahead here and play Universe Warp. It's got that really nice warpy, spinny thing that you would do in camera. Well, there are a bunch of presets for this. There are a bunch of presets ready to go. And these presets allow me to zoom backwards just to be quick, to give it like I did a whole bunch of social media work, ready to go. And then I'm going to take this warp because I could use and save it as a Red Giant preset, a Maxon preset, but I'd like you to know that if you go up here and you right-click at the top, you can make it a Premiere preset to use. And I'm going to call this Social 1, say OK. And now it's up here in my presets for Premiere, allowing me to put it onto a lot of clips faster, natively inside of Premiere, rather than going through the interface, because I want to go fast. Universe is a godsend to me. Now here's the crazy thing. I took about 35 minutes. I did about 28 different techniques, how I worked faster using Maxon products, whether it's Primat, whether it happens to be Magic Bullet, whether it happens to be Universe. And that's what makes me a fan, is that I'm going fast, and it's what allows me to make deliverables happen for my clients. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'm going to be around hanging out for a little bit. My name is Jeff Greenberg. Uh, I am a a passionate user of these tools. I'm a master trainer. I teach other people how to teach them. I teach directly with groups. If you go to that scan me, you go to jgreenbergconsulting.com. I'm happy to talk to you about training, consulting, whether your weapon of choice is Avid, Adobe, Blackmagic. I'm happy to help you 
become better at these tools. What I do for a living, I help make smart people smarter. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Gref Jeff Greenberg. Thank you, sir. My Good pleasure. Hey, Good Interwebs. Seat. Don't forget the Interwebs up there. Hey, everybody. I, I spoke to them at the end. I, I, ho I hope you've been enjoying the presentations. I hope everybody out here enjoyed the presentations. Were there any initial questions? It's 5.30. It's 5.30. Well, no, it's actually 5.40. 5.40 on NAB floor. Has everybody had, uh, had their saturation of information at this point? We had yeah. vibrance, not saturation, vibrance. Vibrance of information, yes. Uh, so, uh, hey, uh, for everybody on the interwebs or everybody here, we're going to have another set of great uh, presentations tomorrow. A whole bunch of different artists coming in tomorrow starting at 9.30. We'll be online at 9.30 with a bunch of great presentations. I hope you can all come back, and thank you again. Oh, it's totally my pleasure. Paul, I love these products. These presentations will be archived on the 3D Motion Show, available to you, and you can watch them later on, pick through them, get all the good stuff out. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.